Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Steven and I am now a third year dental student. I wanna answer some of your questions. There are tons of questions that I get asked on the daily and I figured for this week's video, we would just ask for your questions, your submissions. I would see what they are and I would go through and answer them. So that is what we're gonna do today. I'm really looking forward to this. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, go ahead and subscribe. Also like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribing will help you see all of the content that I release on a weekly basis about dental school, the life of a dental student and everything that surrounds that. So hit that button. One of the beauties of YouTube for me is interacting with all of you. So I appreciate all of you who asked me questions. I'm looking forward to getting into my responses for all of them. And, uh, oh, wait, one second, one second. That's a little better. Without further ado, let's get into the questions. I'm gonna have to make a part two for this video. There's just too many questions. <laughs> what are you planning after graduation? Buying slash renting a full clinic or making a new one? So for those of you who don't know, my father is a dentist and he has had a practice in Ashland City, Tennessee for 43 years now almost. So my plan is to go in and essentially work as an associate for him and his partner. We will see how everything plays out in terms of just the transfer of the practice. But eventually I will be buying that practice from my, my dad's partner and from my dad and I'll be taking over the entirety of it. Just a lot of money is required to do that. So it might take me some time to actually make that purchase, but uh, that is the plan. Thoughts on doing cavity preps and restorations on live patients? Much easier than it is in the lab, I can assure you. When you're cutting on plastic teeth in the lab, I found in two years of doing it that the burrs actually grip into the plastic a decent bit. So a lot of times you'll have things where like the burr catches and slips or uh, you burn the tooth or th things like that. None of that seems to really happen when you're actually cutting on enamel and dentin on an actual patient. The other thing that's important to note is that when you're cutting a cavity preparation on a patient, you're cutting based on the decay and dentin and enamel that are decayed away, specifically dentin, is very, very soft in most cases. And so when you're actually going to cut it out in a cavity preparation, you're almost applying zero force because that, that burr moving at a super, super high speed is getting rid of everything immediately. And there's not a whole lot of input that you as the dentist have to do. In fact, it cuts so easily at times, you have to prevent yourself from expanding too far out into your prep. And that's just something you get used to. It's just much easier. And of course there are situations where it's more difficult. We do have to deal with soft tissue. We have to deal with the tongue, we have to deal with saliva and blood and all the things that are involved with actually working on a patient. But generally speaking from a pure operative perspective and cutting a cavity preparation, in my opinion, it is easier to do on a live patient. What are the things that make you keep going when you are down or lose the patients? This is a good question because I think everybody's going to deal with this at some point uh, or very frequently. The thing that I'd like to do is just kind of take a step back and think about what my goals in life are and, and where I'm headed. Because often it helps in these situations to be grounded and to understand why you're doing what you're doing. I have big life goals and aspirations. I have a lot of dreams and things that I wanna make happen and I've always been that way. So when I get really frustrated, which happens in dental school quite frequently, I take a step back and I think about the big picture. Why am I doing what I'm doing? And I also in that process become very thankful that I'm even in the place that I'm at. Every single day I try to make a recognition of like, this is what I've wanted to do for many, many years. I am blessed to be in this position. I have nothing to complain about. So that's kind of what I do. What truly inspires you about dentistry? Another very good question. I, I think dentistry is just sort of for me, it's the right profession in many ways. The thing that I like the most about it, of course, is the ability to be a doctor and to actually impact the lives of, of people. Uh, in a very specific and intimate way, which is working on their body, working in their mouth. That's a very special relationship that we're allowed to build with patients. And the thing that I like in addition to that is the communication that goes into this process. You, in order to be a dentist, really have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to talk to your staff. You have to be able to talk to your patients, to everybody else that surrounds a dental clinic. And I love communication. It's something that I've always enjoyed. I love speaking. <laughs> I have for many years. And I love building relationships with people. I think you can actually do that quite significantly in dentistry. Of course, there are a lot of professions in which you talk to people constantly, but dentistry combines the many things that I love doing in this life with that ability to communicate and to build something 
That's why I'm so excited about this channel and the future is because I have big aspirations to build something special and dentistry will allow me to do that. And just to be a little bit more specific with that, because I know that's kind of a broad answer, I have great aspirations to build a wonderful dental practice. I wanna build a group of people that have a similar mindset, similar goals. We're all trying to achieve the same thing. I wanna build a staple of a community, a place that people go to, they know what type of service they're gonna get, they know what type of dentistry is going to be done. We're gonna be honest, we're gonna be open about everything everything and we're going to do things the right way, take care of people because we have a great responsibility to do so. Those are my aspirations in dentistry. Are you worried about kids being afraid of the dentist? And I actually had a couple people ask about treating kids. Uh, first off, I haven't treated any kids yet. Uh, personally, I have been around the treatment of children in the dental clinic. I've done some assisting in graduate pediatric dentistry as well as undergraduate pediatric dentistry. And it really just depends on the patient. Most kids don't necessarily want to be there, but some of them are pretty interested and actually are great patients. So it really depends on the situation. As a dentist, I don't see myself treating a ton of kids. I think it's something I'd like to do a little bit, but treating kids can be difficult. And with the patient load that we have at the office where I will be, it might be the case that not a ton of kids are being treated there. Do I worry that they're going to be uncomfortable or hate the dentist? No, because that's almost a prerequisite, but I just will see those patient interactions as an opportunity to practice my communication. You Use it as an opportunity to calm someone because what you'll find when you get into the clinic is that a lot of patients are pretty scared, pretty freaked out, and it's a skill. The ability to calm somebody is the skill that you have to develop so you can kind of work with that and practice on kids. Who wins the Super Bowl this year? Tighten up. Team electric or burner waxing? Definitely burner. I don't really love uh, waxing with an electric waxer. I thought I would and then I did it and I just, I had spent so much time waxing with a Bunsen burner and I just prefer that. I feel like the temperature control for me is better. I know how the timing is gonna work out with the instrument once I get it essentially red hot and then I let it cool. I know how that timing is gonna work and how much wax is gonna melt and all of that. What are the real first and second year salaries in private practice? This depends a lot on just who you are, where you are, what type of practice you're going into. And I had a couple questions about how much money dentists actually make. Once again, depends entirely on your situation. But just to give you an idea, Usually nowadays, young dentists, young graduates are going to graduate from dental school and go into practice in a corporate dentistry setting. And usually they can expect somewhere in the ballpark of like 150,000 a year. That might be a little high. That might be a little bit low. Once again, the prices are gonna vary greatly. I know young dentists who are in that position and they started at 150 and now that salary is creeping up a little bit. You just have to take that number with a grain of salt. It sounds like a ton of money, but when you consider how much money we have in debt in this profession, that 150 a year doesn't tend to go super, super far, especially if you're a young person, you're starting a family, you have a wife or, or husband and children to pay for, and all of these things are something you're thinking about. That is just kind of the base number that I tend to think of. That number can then go quite a bit up depending, of course, on your situation. How's Daisy? This is my favorite question. I was hoping somebody was going to ask about Daisy. If you don't know, Daisy is my four month old chocolate lab puppy. She's chocolate lab mix and she is just, I just love her so much. Daisy's doing great. She's actually in a one month obedience training program right now. So Monday through Friday, she's out of the apartment all day and she is being trained on how to walk on a leash. And there's a couple of tricks that they're training her to do. Generally speaking, they're just trying to get her to a point where she is obedient to the person who is walking her. Uh, and it's really awesome. She's learning super quickly. I pick her up every day and I feel like I'm picking up my daughter at school. Uh, it's really cute. I love it. She has some friends at the place that I take her and she gets a ton of energy out. She exercises, she has fun and she learns and she is just doing wonderfully. I will make a video in the relatively near future about having a puppy in dental school and what the process and the situation has been like for me. Cause I know there are a lot of people who ask about getting a dog in dental school. Is it possible? What should I do? Should I, should I not? I'll talk about more of that in the future, but Daisy is, mm, I just, I love her. Check DM. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I'm terrible at checking my DMs. You guys, if you've ever messaged me on Instagram, you know that I am horrific at checking my DMs. I often check, I check my YouTube comments a lot, but I tend to not check my Instagram DMs. So if I've ever not answered a question that you've asked through Instagram DM, 
it is nothing personal. I just don't tend to have the time to go through all of them, which sucks because I really do want to reach out to all of you, speak with you and try to help you. Uh, I just don't have the time to go through all the Instagram DMs. So if you really want to get in touch with me, leave a comment on a YouTube video because I'll go through and check those every couple of days and respond. Best pre-dental major. Obviously, I'm going to go with my major, the English major. Uh, you know what? When it comes to majoring and trying to be a pre-dental student, just major in something that you enjoy. Major in something that interests you because here's the reality. Getting into dental school is, has nothing to do with your major. There might be some schools that like to see advanced science courses and all that, but if you're a pre-dental student, you're applying, you're gonna have those courses no matter what, they're prerequisite courses. And if you are taking the dental prerequisite courses, you're most likely gonna be a couple courses away from like a biology minor, which is what I did. So I was an English major, biology minor, and I, I was an English major because I've always been interested in literature, I've always been interested in writing. I was able to take these courses that were very, very unique and different. And I spent a couple years in college just learning a bunch of random stuff. And and that was nice because then I got into dental school and learned what I would actually be doing every day. You know, undergrad is really just a stepping stone. It's an opportunity to be accepted. And if you're gonna be in this undergrad position, why not take that opportunity to learn something that you enjoy? Just make sure you get A's in all of your science courses. That should be something that we all shoot for. It will help us out greatly when it comes to being accepted into dental school. Have you had dental work done at the dental school? Patient versus doctor perspective. I haven't had any dental work done by like colleagues, if that's what you're asking about. I actually, I did go into our oral surgery residency and talk to them about having some implants placed because I have some baby teeth still. I talked to them about that. I have, unfortunately, I never followed through with the process. I just have gotten too busy and now I'm way too busy. So I don't know if I'm ever gonna do that, but I have had dental work done in the past. The only thing is it was always done by my dad and his staff. So it was not the normal patient experience that you get in a dental chair because I knew the people that were performing the work very well. So I've never really had a normal relationship with dentistry. And that's something that you might hear me speak more about in the future. I was always the dentist's son, and I went from that to the pre-dental student, to then the dental student, eventually the dentist. If you weren't accepted to the dental school, what other career would you consider? Honestly, and this is something that's changed. I would have, like coming out of college, I would have actually said something in the field that my major was in. So I, I said this earlier, I was an English major. I was actually focused in technical communication. So I probably would have done something in that field. It would have been some sort of science writing. That's probably what I would have done out of college. But now now, having done this YouTube channel and realizing that I have a great potential in sort of graphic and digital design, I probably would have gotten into that field. I feel like my dream job outside of doing what I'm doing right now is making content for my university where I went to college, which is the University of Tennessee. There's a couple of guys that are like their videographers and photographers for the football program. And they do like graphic design every day and make these sweet like teaser videos. I would love to do that because if you've watched my channel, you know that I have a passion for video creation and digital design and all of that. So that's probably the field that I would have landed in. Also, to answer this question very, very thoroughly, I wanted to be a architect when I was growing up and I wouldn't have been able to be an architect in life most likely because I did not even remotely go in that direction. But architect was always the thing that I, I wanted to do because I used to draw floor plans and draw houses when I was a little kid. So there's a couple answers for you. Favorite subject at the dentistry school. So. I think this is like, and I have a lot of these questions as well about like what my favorite specialty are or is. I think for me, my favorite specialty has been kind of fixed prosthodontics. I like the idea of crowns. I think they're cool. I think the crown prep process is very cool. I'm looking forward to doing a lot of that in the clinic on my patients. And I'm also looking forward to kind of getting into the future of fixed pros, which a lot of it is sort of CAD related. So that's probably my answer, but I am captivated by a lot that we do in dental school. Something I think that I will enjoy more or when I'm out of dental school than I do now is endo because I think endo is a great specialty. It's just kind of tough in dental school. So those are a couple of the specialties that I kind of gravitate to. Dental lab tech and denture lab versus dental assistant for a gap year. I think honestly, both are pretty comparable, but if I had to pick one, they might appreciate a lab tech a little bit more just because when you get to dental school, everything, we do all of our own lab work, essentially. We don't make, we don't cast our own crowns or anything like that, but we do a lot of lab work. And if you are someone that has been in a dental lab for a year and you've worked in that field and you've learned a lot about the make the process of making a denture and what is required in a good master impression and all of the, the process of making a denture, like everything that's involved in that, 
I think a dental school would really appreciate that. So if you have an opportunity to work as a dental lab tech for a year, definitely I would say that one. But being a dental assistant is also great for other reasons. Like you're going to learn so much about how a dental office functions, the different roles of the individuals in the office, the different procedures that are done and what is required of those procedures, both from like an instrumentation or armamentarium perspective, and then also too from a patient relation communication perspective, doctor assistant relationship, all of those things you're gonna you're gonna kind of glean from being an assistant. I would say either one is great. If you have an opportunity to do either of those, do it. It's a great way to fill up a gap here because I've been recording for 20 minutes and I haven't even remotely gotten into all of these questions. I'm gonna pick a couple more and then I'm making a part two. <laughs> Worst part of dental school. Hmm. The worst part about dental school to me is just that you're not a dentist yet. And let me explain what that means. We do a lot in dental school. There's a lot of studying. There's a lot of lecture, lab work in the first two years. In the second two years, third and fourth, there's clinic and in clinic. We have so many extra things that we do on top of dentistry itself. And I think the most frustrating thing about that is that I that we all know in two years for us D3s, we will be dentists that essentially do the dentistry and pay people to do all the other stuff. It's a great thing to think about because there's so many things that I do in my day that take up my time, that are tedious, that are difficult, that I wish I could just sort of pay somebody to do and do well, and that I could then focus on my craft. And that's what I'll have the opportunity to do in a few years. But the frustrating thing about right now is I have to do all of it. And the fact that, yeah, I still study for tests. I had a big exam this morning. Uh, it went pretty well, so that's good. But we still study for exams. We still have exams. We still have projects and assignments and all of that stuff, which I am just ready to not be a student anymore in life. I've been a student my entire life and I'm 25 years old. That answers somebody else's question. So I'm ready to move on and I'm just looking forward to becoming a dentist. What is your running routine during the school year? Runs per week, mileage, time of day? This one I wanted to just kind of finish up with. This is a good question. And honestly, the answer is once again, kind of it varies greatly on time of year and where I'm at. In my first two years of dental school, I ran a ton, especially in my first year of dental school. And most of that was the fact that we were, we were in the COVID times. So I wasn't actually on campus most days. We had like online lectures and everything. So I spent a lot of time at home and I had time to spend Bend and to do what I wanted with my day. And a lot of that was running. So back then I probably did on average 60 miles a month. And then you can break that down how you want by week. And the time that I would typically run would be in the morning. I liked running in the morning. I would do like two lectures, then go for a run and then shower and do the rest of my lectures. And that was great. Good, good old, good days back, back then. Nowadays in my third year in the clinic, I don't have a whole lot of time. And that sucks by the way, but yeah, it's that's kind of the way it's been going. I also have a puppy as I talked about earlier. And so I've been essentially not running nearly as much as I was. I'm doing around 10 to 20 miles a week, 10 to 15 maybe these days, which is still a good bit, but I don't have a whole lot of time. And nowadays, if I do run, it's gonna be in the afternoon after I've gotten home from clinic, I've picked Daisy up. She's, you know, happy and fed and taken care of. And I can actually spend some time on myself. The difficulty then is that we still have exams. We still have things to study for. So often I'll get home at 6.30 or like I'll get to that place where I can have some me time at 6.30 PM at night and then I have to study. And so it's it's just, and then you add the YouTube channel in, which is some time that I put in. I don't have a whole lot of time anymore, <laughs> which is abundantly clear, but I love running. I miss it. I look forward to the future when I have the opportunity to just go on long runs again, because I'm man. I love them and I miss them. It's actually sunny outside right now. I should probably do that because I have a little bit of time today. Friends, that is it for this Q&A video. And once again, this is part one because I have so many questions. I'd like to get to all of them. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. And this video is intensely long. I don't wanna take up too much of your time. So we'll be doing a part two like probably next week because I really wanna get to some of these questions. And all of the ones I just answered came directly from Instagram. I have questions on YouTube as well. So thank you to my YouTube viewers who asked those questions. And thank you to all of you today who asked me questions on Instagram. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to part two where we get into more answers. I love you all. I appreciate you for watching this channel and for supporting me. Let's get to 10,000 subscribers. We've got like less than 900 left to get to 10,000, which is insane. Let's do it. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell whoever you want to tell about me, about the channel, about what we're building and growing here. It means a lot to me that people hop on, appreciate the content and, and stick around. Thanks again for the questions and friends, as I always say at the end of my videos, I will see you in the next one.